Hi guys, this is Maurizio. This video will allow you to start using the PSC3000 and OpenPMP. Other videos will be available soon. Thanks for buying the PSC3000 and don't hesitate to contact me if you need help. We need to mount the pump in the nozzles holder. Let's go to the PC to install the software. And if you are using Windows 7, the drivers. This is the folder you will receive. It contains the configuration files for the PSE 3000 and other programs. The configuration folder should have your name on it. Now, we need to copy the configuration files in a directory. The directory name is .openpnp2. You'll find the directory in this location. Then we open our target directory. We delete all the files in it, or we move in another path, and we paste our files and folders. Before launching the program, we need to do something. If you are in Windows 7, you need to install these two drivers. STM32 Serial Port Driver and CH341 SCR. It is the moment to connect the machine to the PC. First, we connect the power line. The USB port on the left is for the top vision camera. The USB port on the right is for the bottom vision camera and two serial ports. But the machine may also come with only one USB port depending on the future developments. Then we turn on the machine. Next step is to take note of the serial ports in Windows Device Manager because we need to set them in OpenPNP. The two serial ports we are looking for are RepRap firmware and USB serial CH341A. In my case, they are COM9 and COM10. I set this under drivers. Then for RepRap firmware, driver setting, I verify that motion control type is set to moderated constant acceleration, and I set the maximum feed rate to 50,000. We need to mount the test board. The test board is a PCB containing fiducial markers and SMD pads. It is utilized to test and calibrate the PSE 3000. The calibration has already been done, so we just use it to check that all is okay and to verify some settings. Okay. Load manually the nozzles on the holder following this order. Okay, now I select the nozzle tip 505. I want to check that all is okay. I want to position the tool over the first location. I want to move the nozzle in one. This is the icon. Now I don't have to look at the camera window. There is an offset between camera and nozzles. This is already calibrated and taken into account. I need to go and check with my eyes that the nozzle in one is in front of the nozzle tip 505. It looks okay. So I go to the second location and move the tool nozzle in one. I check. It seems okay but I will not use the icon to lower down the nozzle. 
I want to be sure that the location is right. So I set the XY distance to 1 millimeter and I jog down step by step to see if the hole of the nozzle support can fit the nozzle 505 in the right way. It is okay. So I click on the P for the Z axis, parking for Z, to retract the nozzle support. Then, I click on the tool icon for the fourth location. I want to try to automatically load the nozzle in one. Then I click on the P for the X, Y axis. These two icons are for unloading and loading the nozzle tips. Let's try. The PSE 3000 resets the Z position and goes to load the nozzle 505. Note that now we are just testing the settings. During a job, the PSE 3000 will decide by itself when to load or change a nozzle. Now we unload the nozzle. I want to do the same check for the nozzle in too, so I repeat the operations. First, I need to select the target nozzle in the jog window. In this case, it is nozzle in 2. First location. Second location. Down by 1 millimeter steps. Then park Z and park XY. Now I load the nozzle tip 505 on the nozzle in 2. Perfect. So if you didn't change any setting, all the other positions on the nozzle holders will be okay. I will try to load the nozzle tip 502 on the nozzle in 1. Note, this tip is far left on the nozzle holder and cannot be loaded by the nozzle in 2. It would reach the limit. All the other tips can be loaded by both nozzle supports. It loaded perfectly. I go to XY parking position. Then I unload both tips. Do not forget to set the target nozzle in the jog window. In 1 to unload nozzle in 1, and in 2 to unload the nozzle in 2. We verified that the Nozzle Tips Tool Change System is properly configured. It is the moment to see how the automatic feeders work. They are easy to install and easy to configure. They can come in slightly different designs. These are micro switches. They control the tension of the film that needs to be peeled. The screw on top is the setting for the tension. The higher the screw is, the earlier the switch gets activated and stops the motor. So if you need more tension, you need to screw in. These two push buttons move the tape. The one on top moves forward. The lower one moves the tape backward. This switch turns the feeder on or off. On is on the right. Off is on the left. To install the feeder on the communication rail, unscrew this bolt. Then screw the bolt back. Turn on the feeder. It is the moment to turn on the rail. I click the actuators tab and it look for feeder power switch. But an error comes out. 
Usually it doesn't happen, but it is good to see how to fix small problems. I check the serial ports. They are both okay. I turn off the machine. I turn it on again. I enable open PNP. It goes through the homing fiducial procedure. And now I click on feeder power switch. On the communication rail, the LED turned on. Now we set the feeder address. You can choose any number you want. Consider that this will be the address of the first slot. The second slot and the third will have an incremental number. Now I choose 13. The second slot's address will be 14 and the third 15. It is the moment to start configuring a feeder. I choose Reference Auto Feeder. I set the address. Then I test it. Okay, now I want to test the slots 2 and 3. I can do with an actuator. I set the address 14. Then 15. Pay attention. Every time you add a new feeder, you need to set its address. To do this, the other feeders must be temporarily turned off. After you have assigned the address to the new feeder, you can turn the others on. You can add as many feeders as you can fit. 12. Now I mount the reel holder and I place in it a reel of resistors. Let's go to feed a tape in the automatic feeder. Cut a tape like this. Split a hole in half. I insert the tape just under the push buttons. If these metal tongues are bent down, pull them up. You can bend them down a little after all is in place. Now I peel the film. I collect the resistors with a small magnetic tool. Don't let the resistors drop inside the feeder. Usually nothing happens, but we don't want the resistors to get inside a gear or on an internal PCB. I can use these resistors later with a special feeder setting. It is possible to use the top vision system to pick up components even if they are scattered randomly on a piece of paper. Push the tape down a little after it passed this metal tongue. If you don't do it, the tape will go from the back following a straight path. It needs to go out following a curved path, like this.
the plastic film needs to follow this path. There is a hex bolt here. It can regulate the pressure on the film. This gear needs to have traction on the film. But if it is too tight, it risks cutting the film. Now I can go on setting my feeder pickup location. I position the viewfinder over the point where the pickup will be performed. Then I capture the location by clicking this icon. As before, to know the Z location, I need to lower on it the nozzle tip. So, target N1. And I click on the icon. Position the tool over the center of the location. When I think the Z value is right, I click on the icon, capture the location. Then click on Apply. Be sure to enable this feeder. Now I select only R225 and I click on Play. Let's see how it goes. I move the camera to the placement location to check. Perfect. Removing the tape from the feeder. The first step is to cut the plastic film, because if you don't cut it, the micro switch stays enabled and the motors will not work. Then cut also the tape coming out from the back. Pull up the metal tongues a little. Push the backward button. It is the lower one. If you push for more than three seconds, the motor will keep rolling. Then pull with your hand the tape. When you have done, stop the motor, pushing the forward button once. More videos about OpenPNP and calibrations will be available soon.